Hi, I'm Natasha. I'm a physiotherapist. And today I thought it'd be interesting to talk to Carla, who is a sports therapist and swim coach. So I think we'll think along kind of similar lines with rehab ideas and range of movement. But I suppose, yeah, for the benefit of people that are maybe just getting to terms with certain exercises or who are rehabbing themselves. Um, I know we both think that self-checks or another way of saying it would be self-management strategies are really important. And I think it first starts with education and information. So if you understand why you're doing something, then that helps not only that inner motivation to get up early or late to do your exercises, um, but it just gives you the understanding of why you're doing something. And I think when you understand why you're doing something, it just, I think it helps with your goals and your outcomes and to be successful getting there. Yeah, That's, definitely. Yeah. Especially with some of the kids that I work with are sort of 10, 11 years old. So they're getting up in the morning and doing all this before they go to school. So for them, obviously having an understanding of why they're doing something is so much more beneficial and like you say makes everything so much easier to do yeah so. like you say especially when you're having to fit it into your lifestyle and your school studies yeah. or a full school or work day it's the same thing isn't it yeah definitely so let's start with firstly what is range of movement I'll kick us off and then you can add anything that you think would be useful okay. that's cool so I'd say range of movement simply there are many different definitions but it's the ability to form any movement fully without stiffness or pain and obviously we know that people when they get injured often the complaint of injury can be stiffness or pain so getting that range of movement full post injury or even before injury is really important to help performance and to help the efficiency of movement um, also, I suppose if you've got full range of movement, then it means that other areas of the body are not going to have to compensate for that lack of movement. So, for example, when you're swimming, you need that full shoulder mobility as much as you need the full thoracic mobility, so the spinal movements. And if you don't have that, then something else is going to have to compensate to make up for that lack of movement. So if we use backstroke as an example mm -hmm. in swimming so for backstroke in swimming to be able to swim powerfully and efficiently we have to be able to get our arm basically next to our ear like this in swimming so if we don't have the ability to put our shoulder into that full extension and then rotate through to be able to put our hand into the water and then swim and catch the water and mm -hmm. eff effectively move through the water then we would find it really difficult to go to swim so if we were only able to lie flat in the water and put our arm at 45 degrees away from our head we are not going to be able to generate as much power as if we had a full range and we could get our arm right next to our ear yeah hopefully that that helps explain sense. it a little bit better yeah yeah so it kind of links in with day-to-day -day activities as well if you don't have that full shoulder flexion even just reaching up into a cupboard it's going to be difficult and then you're going to have to generate different movement to try and your body's always going to get you there that's the thing with the body it's yeah. really clever it will adapt but that can lead to sometimes maybe compensatory movement patterns to enable you to do something which down the line can be problematic so just working on basic range of movement to make sure you've got that full range with without injury firstly but then also after injury then that's just a really good foundation i would say for them performance especially if you're a, an athlete um, yeah definitely so we know we've got that basic range but what actually I suppose gives us the ability to move um again i'll give my thoughts that probably motivation is the first kind of instigator of any movement you need to have some form of motivation to then perform a, a task or a movement so you need motivation and then you need strength of those 
muscles, uh, but you also need flexibility of the opposing muscles. So say you're just doing a basic, um, you're picking something up, so you're doing essentially a bicep curl. You need strength in that bicep, but you need the triceps to be able to lengthen during that movement. So if, I guess in our physio terms, we say they act in coordination, they act in synergy, they act together. And I think that's important just to understand as well. So what about, again, in backstroke, how would that, have you got an example maybe with the shoulder movement and the hips? So how that works backstroke. together? Swimming is very, um, we look at everything kind of as a whole mm -hmm. anyway, because mm -hmm. you can't use just your shoulder to sort of make a movement. So in backstroke, we use our legs and our hips to help transfer power and energy into our shoulder to give us that rotation. So it's kind of a whole body action, which if you don't have the control over it, obviously you can end up sort of just like thrashing around in the water. <laughs> like me <laughs> when I swim. <laughs> whereas we want to be nice and smooth. We want to be really long and we need to have that control over what we're doing. So mm -hmm. where our hand is going into the water um, and how we are moving our hand out at one end, over the top of our body, and then putting it back in again, past our ear. So we kind of have to think about that and know how to engage various muscles at different points of time in the stroke which has to be done on a split second level because yeah. obviously you wouldn't swim like oh i'm now going to contract my abs so exactly. that I transfer the movement from my hip into my shoulder you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do that um that's so, a nice example of in like it's involved a lot of movement is involuntary like i said it just happens we don't have that conscious kind of thought yeah, process it, until it comes to doing individual exercise where we actually maybe think about what we're doing because we're doing it in a controlled environment where we have time to think about it. And I think it's important that it's, we learn it from a very young age in swimming of how to do the stroke correctly so that it becomes automatic. So it is one less thing to think about, especially when you're racing. You don't want to be thinking about oh, how am I going to move my hip? Like, <laughs> yeah. you just want to swim as fast as you can yeah. in that race. So. And then you have, uh, so for your swimmers, you'll have um, land training sessions, won't you? So I get, guess that gives people the ability to put it into practice. And then they'll have home sessions as well, I'm guessing. Yeah, so before every single pool session, our swimmers do sort of 10 to 15 minutes of, of pre-pool so on the pool side like they are ready to swim but it's a, a chance for them to do any prehab that they need to do or if they are injured it gives them another opportunity to do rehab exercises mm -hmm. um, but we try and focus on trying to sort of maximize the prevention of picking up any sort of niggles or anything like that so they go through that routine and they all have their own individual way of doing things we will give them a list of exercises that we would recommend that they cover but they don't have to do that list every single day they'll maybe do a couple from the um neck and shoulders mm -hmm. one one day along with like hips and back and then pick two different ones the next day from the same categories so it gives them the chance to do that um and just understanding that if they can do them correctly and obviously controlled and learn them the right way that they will then be able to swim better once they get in the pool yeah um, and then yeah. when they actually do their full land-based sort of gym workout if you would like but with but body weight we try and do things that are going to benefit the swimming in the pool or replicate what they already do in the pool so for example we do um body weight squats Mm -hmm. which is a, a fundamental movement which can be transferred into a dive and a turn so mm -hmm. pushing off the side of the pool is pretty much a squat position yeah if they don't have that full range of movement in a squat how can they expect to generate power off of the wall for a turn 
yeah. so we try and do things that are going to link into the pool and transfer across throughout what they're doing basically and the nice thing about that it's all like we talk about it a lot but it's it's so important to be functional so it's important to and I think what you said is transferable to all sports is that you replicate in the gym or wherever your training space is what you do on the field or in the game or in the pool like it's really yeah. important that you condition and you strengthen and you have that range of movement so that when you're in competition or um whatever the environment is where you don't think about it and it becomes an automatic process that you have those motor patterns already like securely set in your brain and body and it's all linked up which is you mentioned control and doing movements smoothly and coordination and that all ties in with um practice and repetition and i yeah. think with the kids as much as with adults like repetition is so important and it can feel maybe it can feel a bit samey but if you know why you're doing it then it yeah. makes it, it it gives you purpose it gives you drive yeah and i think like our ability to move is is like anything it can be developed and it can be improved mm -hmm. so as long as we like you say as long as we understand what we're doing so with the correct guidance and the correct encouragement it is a learned ability and it's a learned skill. We can we can change it, we can make it better, we can improve on it all the time. It's never ever gonna be 100% perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know anybody that's 100% perfect at walking down the street. So <laughs> yeah. it can always be changed, it can always be improved. And I think it's important to remember that, like you're not, you're not stuck in that, I can't make this better but you have to you have to want to make the change and you have to understand why you're making that change totally completely agree so we spoke a bit about control so one of the thing i suppose we're always looking out for is quality of movement and for me control does fit into quality of movement so we talk about doing slow repetitions like being mindful about it there's almost no point in doing a set or routine if you're not engaging your brain with what you're doing and I think you can again that's when you're in competition you're not necessarily thinking of what you're doing but definitely for practice sessions if you engage that kind of mindful element to it actually you're going to get more out of it because it's strengthening that mind body connection all the motor pathways etc um, yeah. I think we yeah. said as an example before, not on this chat before, but we said if we don't have control, then we're a little bit like, it would be like we're made of jelly and that's quite hard to control. Um, that's probably like a really simple example to give. If we have control, then it just makes exercise and movement easier and less effort. And one thing, you know we're both really aware of in our jobs is that actually we want to help people to be more efficient in what they do because ultimately that just makes life and activities easier the more efficient yeah, we are definitely and i think if we are doing um, an exercise where we don't have any control and we're kind of like trying to rush through it or go as quick as we can through it um kind of just going through the motions we can hide our actual sort of range of movement so we might think we're amazing at something because we're doing it really quick and trying to get it done as pop like just look really cool basically when actually if we did it slowly and with control how we are supposed to do it we wouldn't have that full range of movement so we're kind of setting ourselves up to fail a little bit in some respects but also putting ourselves at a really high like predisposition risk to injury yeah. because we think we can do this great movement when actually if it came down to it and we were to isolate that one movement we wouldn't be able to do it and yeah. therefore we might try and push ourselves further than we're capable of um not in terms of like the mental state we might think we can do it and nine times out of ten we will be absolutely fine but there will be that one time where we try and push it that little bit too far and our body isn't actually able to cope with it yeah. and that's when we end up getting injured and i think um as adults you know you hear it all the time that 
um, oh, I just bent down to pick something up and my back went or something happened. And actually, it's not that incident that caused it. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. And that was years of maybe not having the mobility or the strength. Yeah. Or sometimes it might just be, you know, something unexpected that, you know, does happen. But um, I suppose the more what what we kind of go by is the more you prepare your body as well as your mind the less likely you are or the more likely likely you are to be efficient in what you do and like you said it's about reducing certainly in a sporting environment it's about reducing injury risk and there's loads of factors to that that we won't talk about today but certainly in a movement perspective that's got to be the foundation to um, yeah. limiting or reducing your injury injury risk a recipe for moving efficiently because if we can all move easier and certainly when you're an athlete you have to be efficient if you want to uh, go places so yeah. I if I start and then you can let me know if your recipe is different yeah so That's I would cool. say that we need a measure of motivation to be efficient so we need I'd say those that goal setting is really really important um we want to want to do something i think that's really important when it comes to moving um i'd say we need a spoon of strength so we need the ability to move requires us to have strength but it also requires us to be flexible so i'm going to put a fresh sprig of flexibility in that recipe if we've got our prime mover maybe our bicep that's strong so i can do that movement we've got to allow this this muscle's got to allow to lengthen so strength and flexibility equally important and lastly I'd say we need a cup of control so again we've spoken a lot um, about how control is important and when we're doing those programs exercise programs if we just link in sync our brain to what we're doing that's going to help ingrain those movement patterns and in the long term just make things more efficient and a lot easier yeah I think mine i've got i've got a couple of the same as what you what you've said on yours like so for my little recipe to make me a better person and <laughs> move more efficiently yeah. i would have sort of a pinch of purpose in there so mm -hmm. like you say we we need to have direction when we're doing something we have to want to do it and and know that we're doing it for the right reasons mm -hmm. um I'd have a tablespoon of control because everything needs to have that control through it when we're doing it actively to make sure we are doing it and not going to hurt ourselves basically yeah um i'd say like you we need a little sprinkle of flexibility in there because if we're not flexible we're not going to move very well <laughs> no. especially if we link it back to like swimming like we've said before with, with starts and turns if you you can't get into those positions you are not going to be able to do it anyway um, and then the last thing that I would put in mind, I, I would say is like a teaspoon of knowledge. So mm. again, kind of linking it together to know why you're doing something. It's all right. Me in my swimming world, going to swimmers, right. We're going to do X, Y, and Z and just go back. Let's go. But if I say to them, we're doing X, Y, and Z because it will make you better at mm -hmm. this, this, and this, they are more likely to want to do it and more likely to take it on board and understand understanding I think is really important with whatever you're doing it makes everything that like you say easier to do and better to go through yeah so. and more efficient I suppose it's just we can't we're not just a physical being we're very much a spirit and a mind and if we understand why then that automatically links in the physical as well so yeah, I completely agree I think you can have all the knowledge in the world but if you don't action it like it's pointless but equally if you don't understand it then the physical won't make sense either so yeah it's important to have both for sure definitely i think so and i think like you say it makes everything easier to do yeah and just... we all want easy don't we oh, ultimately yes. <laughs> i've not met anyone that doesn't want you know the magic wand or the magic pill or something <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah and this is the first step in that we can promise everyone that yes create your own recipe to move efficiently yeah, yeah. and then 
test it out, see if it works, see if you need to add any more ingredients or take a few away maybe. Exactly. Thank you so much for talking with me. Um, hopefully no, it's you. been useful and uh, if anyone's got any questions and there'll be a, a comment box they can ask away. But I will speak to you again soon. Thank you ever so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.